The Akkadian Empire was an ancient Semitic empire centered in the city of Akkad and its surrounding region in ancient Mesopotamia which united all the indigenous Akkadian-speaking Semites and the Sumerian speakers under one rule within a multilingual empire. The Akkadian Empire controlled Mesopotamia, the Levant, and parts of Iran. During the 3rd millennium BC, there developed a very intimate cultural symbiosis between the Sumerians and the Semitic Akkadians, which included widespread bilingualism. Akkadian gradually replaced Sumerian as a spoken language somewhere around the turn of the 3rd and the 2nd millennia BC. The Akkadian Empire reached its political peak between the 24th and 22nd centuries BC, following the conquests by its founder Sargon of Akkad. Under Sargon and his successors, Akkadian language was briefly imposed on neighboring conquered states such as Elam. Akkad is sometimes regarded as the first empire in history, though there are earlier Sumerian claimants. After the fall of the Akkadian Empire, the Akkadian people of Mesopotamia eventually coalesced into two major Akkadian-speaking nations, Assyria in the north, and, a few centuries later, Babylonia in the south. City-state of Akkad the precise archaeological site of the city-state of Akkad has not yet been found. The former gate appears in Sumerian, for example in the Sumerian king list. The later Assyro-Babylonian form Akkadah was likely derived from this. The etymology and meaning of Akkad are unknown. Centuries later, the Neo-Babylonian king Nabonidus mentioned in his archaeological records that Ishtar's worship in Agade was later superseded by that of the goddess Yamanit whose shrine was at Sipera Euro suggesting proximity of Sipa and Agade. Despite numerous searches, the city has never been found. One theory holds that Agade was situated opposite Sipa on the left bank of the Euphrates, and was perhaps the oldest part of the city of Sipa. Another theory is that the ruins of Akkad are to be found beneath modern Baghdad. Reputedly it was destroyed by invading Gushans with the fall of the Akkadian Empire. The first known mention of the city-state of Akkad is in an inscription of Enshokushana of Uruk, where he claims to have defeated Agadia Euro indicating that it was in existence well before the days of Sargon of Akkad, whom the Sumerian king list claims to have built it. Akkad is mentioned once in the Tanakh Euro Book of Genesis 10:10. The mainstays of his, Nimrod's, kingdom were Babylon, Erech, Akkad, and Kani in the land of Shinar. The Greek spelling in this passage is Archad. History, origins, speakers of the Akkadian language seem to have already been present in Mesopotamia at the dawn of the historical period, and soon achieved preeminence with the first dynasty of Kish and numerous localities to the north of Sumer, where rulers with Akkadian names had already established themselves by the 3rd millennium BC. The king Sargon has often been cited as the first ruler of a combined empire of Akkad and Sumer although more recently discovered data suggests there had been Sumerian expansions under previous kings, including Lugal An Mundu of Adab, Yannatam of Lagash, and Lugal Zage C. Sargon and his sons. Sargon of Akkad defeated and captured Lugal Zage C in the Battle of Uruk and conquered his empire. The earliest records in the Akkadian language date to the time of Sargon. Sargon was claimed to be the son of Labam or Bel, a humble gardener, and possibly a hero jewel, or priestess to Ishtar or Inanna. One legend related of Sargon in Assyrian times says that, My mother was a changeling, my father I knew not. The brothers of my father loved the hills. My city is Azerpiranu, which is situated on the banks of the Euphrates. My changeling mother conceived me, in secret she bore me. She set me in a basket of rushes, with bitumen she sealed my lid. She cast me into the river which rose not over me. The river bore me up and carried me to Aki, the drawer of water. Aki, the drawer of water, took me as his son and reared me. Aki, the drawer of water, appointed me as his gardener. While I was gardener Ishtar granted me her love, and for four and years I exercised kingship. Later claims on behalf of Sargon, that his mother was an Enchu priestess. The claims might have been made to ensure a descendancy of nobility, considering only a high-placed family can be made such a position. Originally a cupbearer to a king of Kish with a Semitic name, Urzababa, Sargon thus became a gardener, 
responsible for the task of clearing out irrigation canals. This gave him access to a disciplined corps of workers, who also may have served as his first soldiers. Displacing Urzababa, Sargon was crowned king, and he entered upon a career of foreign conquest. Four times he invaded Syria and Canaan, and he spent three years thoroughly subduing the countries of the West to unite them with Mesopotamia into a single empire. However, Sargon took this process further, conquering many of the surrounding regions to create an empire that reached westward as far as the Mediterranean Sea and perhaps Cyprus, northward as far as the mountains, eastward over Elam, and as far south as Magana a Euro a region over which he reigned for purportedly 56 years, though only four-year names survive. He consolidated his dominion over his territories by replacing the earlier opposing rulers with noble citizens of Akkad, his native city where loyalty would thus be ensured. Trade extended from the silver mines of Anatolia to the lapis lazuli mines in Afghanistan, the cedars of Lebanon and the copper of Megan. This consolidation of the city-states of Summer and Akkad reflected the growing economic and political power of Mesopotamia. The empire's breadbasket was the rain-fed agricultural system of northern Mesopotamia and a chain of fortresses was built to control the imperial wheat production. Images of Sargon were erected on the shores of the Mediterranean, in token of his victories, and cities and palaces were built at home with the spoils of the conquered lands. Elam and the northern part of Mesopotamia were also subjugated, and rebellions in summer were put down. Contract tablets have been found dated in the years of the campaigns against Canaan and against Zalak, king of Gutium. He also boasted of having subjugated the four quarters AA Euro the land surrounding Akkad to the north, the south, the east and the west. Some of the earliest historiographic texts suggest he rebuilt the city of Babylon in its new location near Akkad. Sargon, throughout his long life, showed special deference to the Sumerian deities, particularly Inanna, his patroness, and Zababa, the warrior god of Kish. He called himself the anointed priest of Anu, and the great Ensi of Enlil, and his daughter, Enadana, was installed as priestess to Nana at the temple in Ur. Troubles multiplied toward the end of his reign. A later Babylonian text states, In his old age, all the lands revolted against him, and they besieged him in Akkad. But he went forth to battle and defeated them, he knocked them over and destroyed their vast army. It refers to his campaign in Elam, where he defeated a coalition army led by the king of Arn, where he forced the vanquished to become his vassals. Also shortly after, another revolt had been made. The Sabachu the upper county of Euro in their turn attacked, but they submitted to his arms, and Sargon settled their habitations, and he smote them grievously. Sargon had crushed opposition even at old age. These difficulties broke out again in the reign of his sons, where revolts broke out during the nine-year reign, Rimash, who fought hard to retain the empire, and was successful until he was assassinated by some of his own courtiers. Rimash's elder brother, Manashtushu succeeded and reigned for a period of fifteen years. The latter king seems to have fought a sea battle against thirty-two kings who had gathered against him and took control over their country of what is today the United Arab Emirates and Oman. Despite the success, similarly to his brother, he seems to have been assassinated in a palace conspiracy. Naram Sin Manashtushu's son and successor, Naram Sin, due to vast military conquests, assumed the imperial title King Naram Sin, King of the Four Quarters, the Four Quarters as a reference to the entire world. He was also for the first time in Sumerian culture, addressed as the god of Agade, in opposition to the previous religious belief that kings were only representatives of the people towards the gods. He also faced revolts at the start of his reign, but quickly crushed them. Naram Sin also recorded the Akkadian conquest of Ibla as well as Armenum and its king. Armenum location is debated, it's sometimes identified with the Syrian kingdom mentioned in the tablets of Ibla as Army. The location of Army is also debated. Historian Adel Hayad Otto identify it with the citadel of Bazia Euro Tall Banat complex on the Euphrates River between Nibla and Talbrak, others like Wayne Horowitz identify it with Aleppo, and while most scholars place Armenum in Syria, Michael C. Astor believes it to be located north of the Hamran Mountains in northern Iraq. 
To better police Syria, he built a royal residence at Tel Brak, a crossroads at the heart of the Koba River basin of the Jezera. Nahr Amsin campaigned against Megan which also revolted. Nahr Amsin marched against Megan and personally caught Mandanu, its king, where he instated garrisons to protect the main roads. The chief threat seemed to be coming from the northern Zagros Mountains, the Lulubis and the Gushans. A campaign against the lullaby led to the carving of the famous victory steel of Naram Suen, now in the Louvre. Hittite sources claim Naram Sin of Akkad even ventured into Anatolia, battling the Hittite and Hurrian kings Pamba of Hatti, Zippani of Kanish, and fifteen others. This newfound Akkadian wealth may have been based upon benign climatic conditions, huge agricultural surpluses and the confiscation of the wealth of other peoples. The economy was highly planned. Grain was cleaned, and rations of grain and oil were distributed in standardized vessels made by the city's potters. Taxes were paid in produce and labor on public walls, including city walls, temples, irrigation canals and waterways, producing huge agricultural surpluses. In later Assyrian and Babylonian texts, the name Akkad, together with Sumer, appears as part of the royal title as in the Sumerian Lugalkingikaiuri or Akkadian Angstrom Amati Angstrom Amiri Uakkadi, translating to King of Summer and Akkad. This title was assumed by the king who seized control of Nippur, the intellectual and religious center of southern Mesopotamia. During the Akkadian period, the Akkadian language became the lingua franca of the Middle East, and was officially used for administration, although the Sumerian language remained as a spoken and literary language. The spread of Akkadian stretched from Syria to Elam, and even the Elamite language was temporarily written in Mesopotamian cuneiform. Akkadian texts later found their way to far-off places, from Egypt and Anatolia, to Persia. Collapse of the Akkadian Empire The Empire of Akkad collapsed in 2154 BC, within 180 years of its founding, ushering in a dark age period of regional decline that lasted until the rise of the Third Dynasty of Ur in 2112 BC. By the end of the reign of Naram Sin's son, Shah Kali Shari, the empire had weakened. There was a period of anarchy between 2192 BC and 2168 BC. Shudaral appears to have restored some centralized authority, However he was unable to prevent the empire eventually collapsing outright from the invasion of barbarian peoples from the Zagros Mountains known as the Gushans. Little is known about the Gushan period, or how long it endured. Cuneiform sources suggest that the Gushans' administration showed little concern for maintaining agriculture, written records, or public safety. They reputedly released all farm animals to roam about Mesopotamia freely and soon brought about famine and rocketing grain prices. The decline coincided with severe drought, possibly connected with climatic changes reaching all across the area from Egypt to Greece. The Sumerian king Ernamu cleared the Gushans from Mesopotamia during his reign. It has recently been suggested that the regional decline at the end of the Akkadian period was associated with rapidly increasing aridity, and failing rainfall in the region of the ancient Near East caused by a global centennial-scale drought. H. Vice A. Al have shown archaeological and soil stratigraphic data define the origin, growth, and collapse of Saba, the third millennium rain-fed agriculture civilization of northern Mesopotamia on the Haba plains of Syria. At 2200 BC, a marked increase in aridity and wind circulation, subsequent to a volcanic eruption, induced a considerable degradation of land use conditions. After four centuries of urban life, this abrupt climatic change evidently caused abandonment of Tal Leolan, regional desertion, and collapse of the Akkadian Empire based in southern Mesopotamia. Synchronous collapse in adjacent regions suggests that the impact of the abrupt climatic change was extensive. Peter B. de Monocle has shown there was an influence of the North Atlantic Oscillation on the stream flow of the Tigris and Euphrates at this time which led to the collapse of the Akkadian Empire. The Sumerian king list, describing the Akkadian Empire after the death of Shah Kali Shari, states, Who was king? Who was not king? Urjji the king. Nanam, the king. Me the king. Ililu, 
the king of Euro the four of them were kings but reigned only three years. Dude reigned 21 years. Shichural, the son of Dude, reigned 15 years. Agade was defeated and its kingship carried off to Uruk. In Uruk, Erninjin reigned seven years, Ajaja, son of Erninjin, reigned six years. Kuda reigned six years. Pusarili reigned five years, Ayuta reigned six years. Uruk was smitten with weapons and its kingship carried off by the Gushan hordes. However, there are no known year names or other archaeological evidence verifying any of these later kings of Akkad or Uruk, apart from a single artifact referencing King Dude of Akkad. The named kings of Uruk may have been contemporaries of the last kings of Akkad, but in any event could not have been very prominent. In the Gushan hordes, a nameless king. Imtar reigned three years as king. Shim reigned six years. Ilulumish reigned six years. Inambakus reigned five years. Igeshwash reigned six years. Ayalagab reigned fifteen years. Abate reigned three years. Reigned three years. Kuram reigned one year. Reigned three years. Reigned two years. Iaram reigned two years. Ibranum reigned one year. Habam reigned two years. Pusus and son of Habram reigned seven years. Ayalaganda reigned seven years. Reigned seven years. Reigned forty days. Total twenty-one kings reigned ninety-one years, forty days. Evidence from Tel Lelan in northern Mesopotamia shows what may have happened. The site was abandoned soon after the city's massive walls were constructed, its temple rebuilt and its grain production reorganized. The debris dust and sand that followed show no trace of human activity. Soil samples show fine wind-blown sand, no trace of earthworm activity, reduced rainfall and indications of a drier and windier climate. Evidence shows that skeleton-thin sheep and cattle died of drought, and up to 28,000 people abandoned the site, seeking wetter areas elsewhere. Telbrak shrank in size by 75%. Trade collapsed. Nomadic herders such as the Emirates moved herds closer to reliable water suppliers, bringing them into conflict with Akkadian populations. This climate-induced collapse seems to have affected the whole of the Middle East, and to have coincided with the collapse of the Egyptian Old Kingdom. This collapse of rain-fed agriculture in the upper country meant the loss to southern Mesopotamia of the agrarian subsidies which had kept the Akkadian Empire solvent. Water levels within the Tigris and Euphrates fell 1.5 meters beneath the level of 2600 BC, and although they stabilized for a time during the following Earth III period, rivalries between pastoralists and farmers increased. Attempts were undertaken to prevent the former from herding their flocks in agricultural lands, such as the building of a 180 km wall known as the Repeller of the Amorites between the Tigris and Euphrates under the Earth III ruler Shusin. Such attempts led to increased political instability. Meanwhile, severe depopulation occurred to re-establish demographic equilibrium with the less favorable climatic conditions. The period between circa 2112 BC and 2004 BC is known as the Earth III period. Documents again began to be written in Sumerian, although Sumerian was becoming a purely literary or liturgical language, much as Latin later would be in medieval Europe. The curse, later material described how the fall of Akkad was due to Naram Sin's attack upon the city of Nippur. When prompted by a pair of inauspicious oracles, the king sacked the Eco Temple, supposedly protected by the god Enlil, head of the pantheon. As a result of this, eight chief deities of the Anunnaki pantheon were supposed to have come together and withdrawn their support from Akkad. For the first time since cities were built and founded, the great agricultural tracts produced no grain, the inundated tracts produced no fish, the irrigated orchards produced neither wine nor syrup, the gathered clouds did not rain, the mascarum did not grow. At that time, one shekel's worth of oil was only one half quart, one shekel's worth of grain was only one half quart. These sold at such prices in the markets of all the cities. He who slept on the roof, died on the roof, he who slept in the house, had no burial, people were flailing at themselves from hunger. For many years, the events described in the Curse of Akkad were thought, like the details of Sargon's birth, 
to be purely fictional. But now the evidence of Tull Leolin, and recent findings of elevated dust deposits in sea cores collected off Oman, that date to the period of Akkad's collapse suggest that this climate change may have played a role. Government the Akkadian government formed a classical standard with which all future Mesopotamian states compared themselves. Traditionally, the Ensi was the highest functionary of the Sumerian city-states. In later traditions, one became an Ensi by marrying the goddess Inanna, legitimizing the rulership through divine consent. Initially, the monarchical Lugal was subordinate to the priestly Ensi, and was appointed at times of troubles, but by later dynastic times, it was the Lugal who had emerged as the preeminent role, having his own a copyright, or palace, independent from the temple establishment. By the time of Mesalim, whichever dynasty controlled the city of Kish was recognized as Angstrom Akia Soati, and was considered preeminent in summer, possibly because this was where the two rivers approached, and whoever controlled Kish ultimately controlled the irrigation systems of the other cities downstream. As Sargon extended his conquest from the lower sea, to the upper sea, it was felt that he ruled the totality of the lands under heaven, or from sunrise to sunset, as contemporary texts put it. Under Sargon, the Ensis generally retained their positions, but was seen more as provincial governors. The title Angstrom Akia Soati became recognized as meaning Lord of the Universe. Sargon is even recorded as having organized naval expeditions to Dilmun and Magan, amongst the first organized military naval expeditions in history. Whether he also did in the case of the Mediterranean with the Kingdom of Captera, as claimed in later documents, is more questionable. With Naram Sin, Sargon's grandson, this went further than with Sargon, with the king not only being called Lord of the Four Quarters, but also elevated to the ranks of the Dinga, with his own temple establishment. Previously a ruler could, like Gilgamesh, become divine after death but the Akkadian kings, from Naram Sin onward, were considered gods on earth in their lifetimes. Their portraits showed them of larger size than mere mortals and at some distance from their retainers. One strategy adopted by both Sargon and Naram Sin, to maintain control of the country, was to install their daughters, Enadana and Emnina respectively as high priestess to Sin, the Akkadian version of the Sumerian moon deity, Nana, Adda, in the extreme south of Sumer, to install sons as provincial Ensi governors in strategic locations, and to marry their daughters to rulers of peripheral parts of the empire. A well-documented case of the latter is that of Naram Sin's daughter Tera Megade at Urkus. Economy The population of Akkad, like nearly all pre-modern states, was entirely dependent upon the agricultural systems of the region, which seemed to have had two principal centers, the irrigated farmlands of southern Iraq that traditionally had a yield of 30 grains returned for each grain sown and the rain-fed agriculture of northern Iraq, known as the upper country. Southern Iraq during Akkadian period seems to have been approaching its modern rainfall level of less than 20 m per year, with the result that agriculture was totally dependent upon irrigation. Before the Akkadian period the progressive salinization of the soils, produced by poorly drained irrigation, had been reducing yields of wheat in the southern part of the country, leading to the conversion to more salt-tolerant barley growing. Urban populations there had peaked already by 2600 BC, and ecological pressures were high, contributing to the rise of militarism apparent immediately before the Akkadian period. Warfare between city-states had led to a population decline, from which Akkad provided a temporary respite. It was this high degree of agricultural productivity in the south that enabled the growth of the highest population densities in the world at this time, giving Akkad its military advantage. The water table in this region was very high and replenished regularly a euro by winter storms in the headwaters of the Tigris and Euphrates from October to March and from snow melt from March to July. Flood levels, that had been stable from about 3000 to 2600 BC, had started falling, and by the Akkadian period were a half meter to a meter lower than recorded previously. Even so, the flat country and weather uncertainties made flooding much more unpredictable than in the case of the Nile. Serious deluges seem to have been a regular occurrence, requiring constant maintenance of irrigation ditches and drainage systems. 
farmers were recruited into regiments for this work from August to October a Euro a period of food shortage a Euro under the control of city temple authorities, thus acting as a form of unemployment relief. Some have suggested that this was Sargon's original employment for the King of Kish, giving him experience in effectively organizing large groups of men. A tablet reads, Sargon, the king, to whom Enlil permitted no rivla Euro 5,400 warriors ate bread daily before him. Harvest was in the late spring and during the dry summer months. Nomadic emirates from the northwest would pasture their flocks of sheep and goats to graze on the stubble and be watered from the river and irrigation canals. For this privilege, they would have to pay a tax in wool, meat, milk, and cheese to the temples, who would distribute these products to the bureaucracy and priesthood. In good years, all would go well, but in bad years, wild winter pastures would be in short supply, nomads would seek to pasture their flocks in the grain fields, and conflicts with farmers would result. It would appear that the subsidizing of southern populations by the import of wheat from the north of the empire temporarily overcame this problem, and it seems to have allowed economic recovery and a growing population within this region. As a result, Summer and Akkad had a surplus of agricultural products but was short of almost everything else, particularly metal ores, timber and building stone, all of which had to be imported. The spread of the Akkadian state as far as the Silver Mountain, the cedars of Lebanon, and the copper deposits of Megan, was largely motivated by the goal of securing control over these imports. One tablet reads Sargon, the king of Kish triumphed in thirty-four battles up to the edge of the sea destroyed their walls. He made the ships from Alua, the ships from Megan the ships from Dilmun tie up alongside the quay of Agade. Sargon the king prostrated himself before Dagon made supplication to him. He gave him the upper land, namely Mari, Yamuti, Ribla, up to the cedar forest up to the silver mountain. Culture, Language During the third millennium BC, there developed a very intimate cultural symbiosis between the Sumerians and the Akkadians, which included widespread bilingualism. The influence of Sumerian on Akkadian is evident in all areas, from lexical borrowing on a massive scale, to syntactic, morphological, and phonological convergence. This has prompted scholars to refer to Sumerian and Akkadian in the third millennium as a sprachbund. Akkadian gradually replaced Sumerian as a spoken language somewhere around the turn of the 3rd and the 2nd millennium BC, but Sumerian continued to be used as a sacred, ceremonial, literary and scientific language in Mesopotamia until the 1st century AD. Poet a Euro priestess in Adana, Sumerian literature continued in rich development during the Akkadian period. Enadana, the wife of Nana, the Sumerian moon god and daughter of Sargon of the Temple of Sinadur, who lived circa 2285 a Euro 2250 BC, is the first poet in history whom we know by name. Her known works include hymns to the goddess Inanna, the exaltation of Inanna and Aninzaga Ra. A third work, The Temple Hymns, a collection of specific hymns, addresses the sacred temples and their occupants, the deity to whom they were consecrated. The works of this poetess are significant, because although they start out using the third person, they shift to the first person voice of the poet herself, and they mark a significant development in the use of cuneiform. As poetess, princess, and priestess, she was a personality who, according to William W. Hello, set standards in all three of her roles for many succeeding centuries, in the exaltation of Inanna. Enadana depicts Inanna as disciplining mankind as a goddess of battle. She thereby unites the warlike Akkadian Ishtar's qualities to those of the gentler Sumerian goddess of love and fecundity. She likens Inanna to a great storm bird who swoops down on the lesser gods and sends them fluttering off like surprised bats. Then, in probably the most interesting part of the hymn, Enadana herself steps forward in the first person to recite her own past glories establishing her credibility, and explaining her present plight. She has been banished as high priestess from the temple in the city of Ur and from Aruk and exiled to the steppe. She begs the moon god Nana to intercede for her because the city of Aruk, under the ruler Lugalan, has rebelled against Sargon. The rebel, Lugalan, has even destroyed the temple Ina, one of the greatest temples in the ancient world, 
and then made advances on his sister-in-law. Technology. One tablet from this period reads, From the earliest days, no one had made a statue of lead, Rimish king of Kish, had a statue of himself made of lead. It stood before Enlil. And it recited his virtues to the adieu of the gods. The copper Bastki statue, cast with the lost wax method, testifies to the high level of skill that craftsmen achieved during the Akkadian period. Achievements, the empire was bound together by roads, along which there was a regular postal service. Clay seals that took the place of stamps bear the names of Sargon and his son. A cadastral survey seems also to have been instituted, and one of the documents relating to it states that a certain Uramalik, whose name appears to indicate his Canaanite origin, was governor of the land of the Amorites, or Amaru as the semi-nomadic people of Syria and Canaan were called in Akkadian. It is probable that the first collection of astronomical observations and terrestrial omens was made for a library established by Sargon. The earliest year names, whereby each year of a king's reign was named after a significant event performed by that king, date from the reign of Sargon the Great. Lists of these year names henceforth became a calendrical system used in most independent Mesopotamian city-states. In Assyria, however, Years came to be named for the annual presiding Limu official appointed by the king, rather than for an event. See also Cities of the Ancient Near East, List of Kings of Akkad, Notes. Further reading, Salaberger, Walther. Western Holtz, Arj, Mesopotamian. Akkad Zit under 3 Zit, or Bees Biblicus A Orientalis, 160-3, Gar Paragraph Tingen, Vandenhoek and Reprecht. ISBN A3-525-53325 ZAM External links, Iraq's Ancient Pasta Euro Pen Museum, Year Names of Naram Sina Euro CDLI, Year Named of Shah Kali Sharia Euro CDLI, Site on Enadana at Virginia Tech University